Coming up on Ask the Tech Guy, how to turn off those annoying site notifications in Google Chrome. Stay tuned. Ask the Tech Guy comes to you from Twit's LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? LastPass can ensure they are by making access and authentication seamless, whether employees are working in the office or remotely. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This is Twit. This episode of Ask the Tech Guy is brought to you by LastPass. Visit lastpass.com slash twit. Hello, everybody. Leo Laporte here. Question of the day in Ask the Tech Guy land. This comes to me from Christine. She doesn't say where. Can you tell me, she says, how to stop these notifications? I hit dismiss, but they keep returning, and I couldn't find anything by searching Google. Here's the notification she's talking about. Looking for a productivity boost? Learn how to organize your tabs. This is uh, a tool tip, a helping hint, and presumably this showed up when you went to Chrome or, uh, Google .com. Um, I don't know if you can disable this or if this is one of those things that's grandfathered in by Google. I have to say, I don't see them, so I'm thinking maybe you can. And let me show you where they hide this feature, because... Honestly, it drives me nuts. We've all seen this nowadays. You go to a site, you haven't been there before, and it says, hey, hey, would you like us to, hey, would you like us to notify you? Hey, when anything exciting happens on the site, they all want to do this. And what they want to do is pop up notifications in your browser when you're visiting. Now, Google does not make this easy to disable. They do not make it easy to find, but it is in your Chrome settings. So let's go there right now. And uh, we, we have a lot of settings. And the problem is, it's not kind of not where you would expect it to be. It's under site settings. I'm not sure if this will fix those Google pop-ups. But if there is a way to do it, this will be how you do it. Now, it's showing me a number of sites that I have already allowed, including from my Google Calendar. You might want pop-ups from your Google Calendar. I definitely don't want GoPro to pop up notifications. So that that's a that's a no-go. And here's the settings site-wide for GoPro. But I'm just going to clear all of that out. And then I'm going to do something that's going to change my life and your life. Sprint, why did I... Oh, I see. I'm just blocking location from Sprint. Again, I might want to turn that back on. So I'm just going to clear the data or and reset the permissions. And now the next time I go to Sprint, it'll say, hey, hey. Can I have location information? But here's the thing that uh, you want to look at. These are all the permissions. Uh, this is actually an important thing. You notice it's kind of hidden away under site settings in the settings. It's under the privacy and security tab. Um, location, camera. Most of these should be asked before accessing. You should change them. This is the one that I change and I think you want to change. Notifications. Ask before sending. Uh, you might just say, well, yeah, of course, ask. But that's that's the problem. Every site you go to says, hey, can I send you notifications? Hey, can I send you notifications? Here's what you do. Flip this switch to off. Say sites cannot ask to send notifications. And furthermore, if you have sites that you've given permission, as you can see, I have probably by accident, just remove them. Just remove them. You have to do it one by one, unfortunately. But... This way, not only will sites no longer send you notifications, but they won't ask you if they can send notifications. Now, notice there are some places here where notifications are allowed, and these are all generally from Google. And this is a little bit more troubling. You can reset the permissions here, including the notifications. Now, you see I have them blocked um, but you might want to go through all of the ones that you've these that you've allowed, and I suspect somewhere you've allowed uh, Google. Look at that. There's that GoPro again. Let's let's go into settings here and just block them forever. <laughs> Isn't that a good feeling? I do want my calendar notifications to come up, but I don't need notifications from Google Drive. Um, mail. 
Yeah, I don't use Gmail anymore. Notice there's no way to turn this off. And that's part of the problem. That little helpful pop-up that you might you've been getting, Christine, that might actually be something Google does not let you turn off because hey, we want to be able to advertise to you. It is well worth whatever browser you use. I don't actually use Google Chrome very often. It is the most used browser on uh, Apple's uh, Macintosh, especially on the new Macs. I use the Safari browser. Uh, everywhere else, I use Firefox. I like Firefox a lot. It's it's the last real open source browser, so uh, I, I like that a lot about them. In every case, though, these browsers do allow you somewhere buried in the settings, usually under site settings, to disable notifications and pop-ups like that. The problem with using Google Chrome is, and Google's never shy about this, Google will use Google Chrome to promote their commercial activities. You're using a free Google piece of software, and the deal, unwritten, unspoken, is, and yes, we're going to do what we want with that browser. So, Ultimately, the best way to dismiss those notifications is to stop using Google Chrome. I know many businesses require it. I uh, always keep a copy of Chrome on my system because occasionally I'll get to a site that says, oh, no, you have to use Chrome. But increasingly, Microsoft's Edge, which is based on the same engine as Google Chrome, the Chromium engine, works just as well on those sites. It, it, it has other privacy issues, but not any Google privacy issues. Uh, Firefox has a lot of settings. In fact, Firefox probably has the most elaborate uh, privacy settings that really allow you to block a lot of things, including those Facebook like buttons, things like that. Brave, which is a privacy-centered uh, browser that's based on also on the Chromium engine, has a lot of privacy settings. So does Opera. Um, I, I would say it's a good idea to try a bunch of different browsers. It seems like Chrome is now just the default for everybody. I would look at the platform native browsers, Safari on Mac OS, uh, Edge on Microsoft Windows. I think in most cases, those should be your go-to. The reason I use Firefox is because I can synchronize Firefox bookmarks and plugins, you know, extensions across all the different platforms I use, Windows, Mac, and Linux. And I do use a lot of different systems because of my job. So for me, Firefox makes the most sense because of Firefox Sync. Try them all. See which ones you like. And I can promise you, you're not going to get those annoying Google pop-ups on anything that's not a Google browser. Great question, Christine. I, I, I really like questions like that because so often as users of technology, we kind of, we put up with the little aggravations. We go, oh, yeah, it's too much trouble to figure it out and it's annoying, but I'll just close that box and I'm going to live with it. The problem is, I believe over time they add up and add up and, and, and they really become detrimental to your experience of using a system. So I like the idea of when something annoys you, fix it. It usually doesn't take very long, maybe a, a little research, a question, an email to me. But fix it because each one of those, it's death by a thousand paper cuts. Each one of those is whittling away the pleasant user experience and making it you know, unpleasant. Uh, and, and pretty soon they pile up and pretty soon it's just no fun anymore. So fix it. That's my, it's the broken windows policing of computer technology, <laughs> if you know what that means. Our show today brought to you by LastPass. LastPass has been named a leader in the G2 Fall Grid Reports. You, perhaps you've seen that. It's a leading peer-to-peer -peer review site. They feature unbiased user reviews on leading software solutions. And what's great about LastPass is we can use as a, as a company over 100 policies and advanced security features that keep our employees safe and yet make it easier to use. Uh, LastPass, whether you configure it up like crazy as we do or out of the box, is the easiest, best password manager around. For identity and access management, it's LastPass. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to find out how they can help you. That's lastpass.com slash twit. And that's Ask the Tech Guy uh, for this week. I hope you uh, have a wonderful week and come back again next week for yet another fabulous episode of Ask the Tech Guy. We'll see you Monday. Bye-bye. Stumped on a nasty tech conundrum? Email Ask the Tech Guy at twit.tv.